Welcome back to Home Improvement Woodworking. I'm doing a series of videos about organizing your workshop and I purchased some organizers here that I need to mount up on the wall. So I'm going to build a cabinet. But the challenge here is if I just build a box and have all these stacked up inside, if I need the bottom one, I have to take all of them out to get to it. So I've designed a cabinet here that has some slots in it that will allow me to take out whatever one I want in whatever order. So stick with me, I'll show you how it's done. Our videos show you how to add value and character to your home. This is the centerpiece of the room, so it really needs to visually work. Learn how to get quality results that you'll be proud of. Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. I've got all my material cut here, and if you want to learn how to build a basic upper cabinet, uh, check out the other video in the series about building an easy upper cabinet. So I've got a top and bottom here that I'm going to use, and they're the size that basically is this footprint. I've already put the edge banding on the front. I've got a dado in the back for the back. And the sides, this is where I'm doing something slightly different than the other cabinets you've seen me build. The side is normally 3 quarter inch, but I'm using a half inch board here instead. And the reason is, what I'm going to do is add little slots of quarter inch board and then I'm going to put in um, inch and a quarter pieces of hardwood maple and keep stacking those up one over the other and what that'll do is give me lips that each of these can slide into. There's one and a quarter maple I need to cut to length and the length needs to be so it's going right to the back of the cabinet so I'll line it up with the dado mark it to length here and then I'm going to cut it on an angle at the front. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, I think that's going to work out well. So the next thing is to figure out how many chunks of this quarter inch I need to space these out and give me enough room that these things aren't going to bind. They're going to have a bit of space to move. So I've got this laid up on the bottom. This will be the first shelf that this is going to sit on. And the highest point on the storage box is right here where this orange tab is. So I'm just going to lay this on top here and make a mark. And then what I'm going to do is take off three quarters of an inch for the thickness of this and then add a quarter inch. So I need a half inch down from that line and that will give me the first spacer. Then I can insert this and then cut more spacers up to give me the equal spacing. The first strip I cut is wider than the rest of them because I've got a three quarter inch bottom going on here. So now all I need to do is glue them on with the supports in between each one. So to do that, I'm going to use just regular wood glue for most of it. And then I'm going to use CA glue for the front. So if you use CA glue with an activator, it will dry in about 10 seconds. You get about five seconds to position it. So I gotta work fast to get this in the right spot. Get an instant bond. Okay, so that's in place there. Now grab one of these, put it in place. So I'm going to put a little bit of CA glue front to back. That's going to act as my clamp. Put regular PVA glue in the middle. I'm 
a nice heavy coat. I'm going to put a little bit in this seam here. Now, I'm not going to use the activator on this. I'm going to get this in place. It's going to move around a little bit. Okay, that's in. And I'll keep working my way down the line. Same process with both of these glues. So there you go, it's all glued up. This is what's called additive woodworking. Instead of cutting dados and putting these in, what I'm doing is adding half inch material and quarter inch material to make the three quarter inch depth I need. And it's providing support for these dividers here. It's also giving me a rabbit at the back here, so this serves as the surface for the back panel of the cabinet. Please give us a thumbs up so more people will see our videos. Now we'll set this one aside. It doesn't take long for that CA glue to tack up. And I'll go back to this one. What I want to do is put screws in the back of these just to give them a little extra support. So what I'll do is just mark the center line here of where each of these dividers are. And then I'll draw that down the middle with a square and that will tell me exactly where the middle where I can do a, a hole and put a screw in. And because I've got this sitting on those pieces, I've got some really good support for pre-drilling pilot holes. I don't want to be too close to the front here. I don't want to split that block. So I'm just going to set them back. So that'll give really strong support. I'll do the same thing back here and then flip over to the other side. Now it's time to put edge banding here and this is not a traditional edge where you can just clean it off uh, on both sides. So what I'm going to do is line up the edge banding on this edge here and then I can trim it off on the outside. So I just need a length here. And if you haven't seen my other video, this edge banding is heat activated. So what you do is center it. Just lock that in the vise first. Center the edge banding. And with your iron on a cotton setting, which is fairly hot, you activate the glue. So when the glue is hot, it's easy to manipulate the direction of this where it's actually sitting. So while it's warm, I'll just adjust the alignment. And then I'll push it down as I go along here. little bit off right here so I'll just heat it up again reactivate the glue move it over a little bit and then rub it down a 
I'll set this aside and let it cool. I'll do the other one, then come back and trim it. Now I can trim the ends with a utility knife. And then this edge here, I'm just going to plane down. I've got this miniature plane and it's perfect for a job like this. It just gently takes down the edge until you're right down flush with the plywood. Just like that. We're now ready to assemble the cabinet so I can put the top here and the bottom. Over here. So normally what I do is use um, clamping squares on the inside but in this particular application, the clamping square is going on the outside. This is just a way to help hold everything in alignment while I get it put together. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips, and more. So I'll put a bead of glue on this edge. and then get this lined up. I line up this edge as well, and on the cabinet of the size, I put three screws across. Now we're going to flip it over and insert the back. So the back goes in the dados, and it sits at the bottom just inside the rabbit. The last component are the nailers. I need to put those on so I can secure the cabinet to the studs. These are three and a half inches and one goes on this side and the other goes on this side. Oh, but I cut them too short. I forgot that I had a rabbit in here from those panels on the inside. Now that's better. With these nailers installed, this is now structurally sound. Now one thing you might want to consider when you're building a cabinet like this is what the sides look like. This is being mounted to another cabinet on this side, but this side is going to be visible. So what I'm going to do is put some veneer on here to disguise this. Another way to disguise it is to build a door panel you would normally put on a door and put it on the side. But I think the veneer is the easiest way to solve the problem.
When working with veneer, I put tape across the veneer. And what that does is it helps hold it together and prevents it from splitting. This stuff's pretty fragile, so it can split on you and just shatter in pieces. The tape really helps. And I use blue tape, which is stickier than the green masking tape. Now when you're working with contact cement, make sure that you're wearing the proper PPE. It's important to make sure that you're protecting your lungs when you're working with these chemicals. Applying the contact cement is fairly easy. It's just a matter of getting some on there and then smoothing it out. Once it's dried, it takes about 15 minutes, then it's a matter of putting it on the cabinet. Now, if you put a few wood strips across the cabinet, you can position it and prevent it from sticking. Then as you're ready to attach it, you can slide out the boards and then you can get it positioned exactly where you want with no mistakes. There's no margin of error with contact cement. Just trim it off with a utility knife and we're all set to go. Before I test out the cabinet, let me tell you about the next video in this workshop organization series. You can see how I use these organizer boxes, hang some cabinets, and get my workshop much more functional. Subscribe and you get notified when the next video comes out. You can see this is a nice finished look. So let's give it a test. Let's put these inside. I've got two of these filled already, but I haven't opened the other ones yet. Let's see how this works. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll get the other ones open here. Now, these are brand new. I have done some research on these to figure out what was the best solution for what I was looking for. And what I'm storing in these in my workshop are things that I don't frequently access. So the things that I do frequently access are screws. And I've got these in a storage bin. I can pull them out. I can use the tray like you've seen me use. And these are nice and flexible. They're not brittle but I've got a number of things that I don't normally use. The nice thing about this is they also stack. So these two stack together like this, and I can carry them as one unit when I need to take these somewhere. So let's undo this, add it in, close that up, put that one in. So I do have room here for one more if I wanted another one, but I've purchased another set here and this is for small parts much smaller this kit here allows me to put all kinds of small dividers in where I have small quantities of things so on the top here and there's enough space here that I can add another one of these boxes in the future if I need one there are links to these boxes in the video description. If you'd like plans for this cabinet, let me know. If there are enough people interested, I'll make plans and put them in the video description as well. In terms of a cabinet like this, I really wanted to demonstrate how you could make a cabinet that has dados in it without actually cutting dados on a table saw or with a rotor. It's about the same amount of time, but it certainly requires less tools to be able to do something like this. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out the other videos in our workshop organization series. If you haven't subscribed yet, click over here and click on the bell icon to get notified every time we publish a video. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop.